Um, thank you for joining the webinar today. Today we're joined with um, Lance Healy of Banyan Technology. And um, I've known Lance a, a long time. And uh, they're doing some absolutely phenomenal, uh, innovative things around freight management and freight spend. And uh, any of you on the webinar today that um, have any level whatsoever of, of freight, there's no doubt in my mind they're going to be able to save you some money. So you join the right webinar. And um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Lance and, and let him tell you all about the, the magic that they do at Banyan Technology. All right, thanks, James. Um, I thank you, everyone, for for joining on the on the webinar here today. And <clears throat> wanted to speak specifically uh, to how to uh, better or improve the relationships that you have with your carriers uh, by collaborating with them and sharing some knowledge. Um, so I hope that uh, uh, everyone that's that is uh, attending can get a lot of takeaways from this, something they can put into practice immediately and, and turn it into in real savings and real dollars. Um, so a, a little uh, quick background on on, on Banyan Technology, um, uh, founded as uh, as a as a SaaS model out of a, we were originally a construction materials distributor in Cleveland, Ohio, um, in uh, in 2001 and. We essentially built this for uh, our own use uh, in an online market exchange uh, years ago. Um, uh, since uh, since that time, we've we've been out of the construction materials game and and have grown to, to over 12,000 clients. Um, and uh, our our job is we're not a broker, uh, we're not an agent for any carrier, we're not on, on commission from carriers or whatnot. Is we're really a neutral platform. Um, that will allow you as a, as a manufacturer distributor uh, to normalize all of your freight interactions through a single interface. Um, we've uh, really positioned ourselves as, a, as an improvement, as an enhancement from uh, static rate tables that have been prevalent in the industry for, for years and years. And uh, so far we've connected with over 7,200 uh, different carriers in our in our lifetime. So, um, but we do currently serve a market of um, uh, of our customers that involves uh, everyone from freight on it payment companies to manufacturers, distributors, third party logistics firms, um, classic freight brokers, and all kinds of other folks in between. So, that's who we are. Uh, just to, by way of introduction, I, I wanted to give a, a, a brief background of uh, kind of the history of LTL, um, uh, specifically focused on less than truckload freight. Um, it's, it seems to be a lot of mystery wrapped around that. If if it's not uh, your area of expertise, and it probably shouldn't be, um, it's a great way to just kind of understand where we came from. Uh, and then talk about a lot of common practices, common assumptions that we see from uh, from manufacturers, distributors um, that really are just trying to get their products from point A to point B, some ways that uh, uh, might be able to improve those. Um, and, and then dive a little deeper on the details of, of, of your carrier's profitability. Um, because if you can understand more effectively how they make money, then you can work with them more effectively on on how to reduce your expense uh, to them. Um, and then finally, really saying if you can capture a lot of data um, uh, through uh, you know manually or through the use of technology, um, how you can leverage that business intelligence and and really dramatically reduce your freight expense. So um, before we jump into that, this is just uh, an interesting little. Um, segment in terms of seeing some of the freight costs um, uh, being driven up uh, over recent years um, and just a, a dramatic display of how much of the freight costs have gone up um, at four dollars a gallon back to where they were in 99 of under a dollar a gallon and how much that impacts uh, uh, the, the carrier's operations. So uh, freight fuel surcharges right now are, are hovering somewhere around 30% um, of the uh, of the of the total charge, um, which is uh, dramatically uh, it makes it makes a huge impact if if a, a company is not aware of 
of what those are and how that's affected. So, um, quick history of of, uh, of of some of the LTL. I call it the history of averages. But um, back before 1980, freight was regulated uh, by the government by some tariff bureaus, and each one of those tariff bureaus basically maintained um, what those freight were uh, freight rates were. Uh, from point to point in New England and uh, the South and the Rocky Mountains, um, and uh, up until um, so a lot of the old timers will say, "Well, freight is freight; doesn't matter which carrier you use; they're all about the same." Um, that was true, um, and in 1980, when freight was deregulated, um, it was almost deregulated. Um, they essentially said. Um, Okay, carriers can charge different amounts, but we're still going to need uh, the carriers to submit their tariffs to the Surface Transportation Board, um, and uh, and and they need uh, to work on their contracts based on those tariffs. Um, and, and what happened with that is uh, when they first opened it up, there weren't really a lot of swings or wasn't a lot of movement in the rates between carriers because. Um, they all had their terminals in about the same place. They were all used to charging something. So there was very little um, variances between the carriers. Um, as time went on, uh, those variances started increasing. Uh, uh, so instead of a Atlanta to Memphis lane, um, all of a sudden that, that had some huge swings depending on where the carrier's terminals were, where their backhauls were, where their anchor clients were. Um, and at that time in 1980, the internet wasn't uh, wasn't around yet, so there wasn't really an effective way to capture rates um, from each one of the carriers, short of calling each one of them up. What we did, uh, Southern Motor Carriers, one of the rate bureaus, had a a very brilliant idea, and they essentially recreated regulation and they used a um, a blended average rates into um, into a, what, what's now known as a, a czar tariff. Um, and uh, it served the the shippers, the manufacturers and distributors very effectively so they could see, I know what my rates are, I now have a, a common tariff to use that all the carriers have to abide by, So, but it is an average tariff. So it took the the best and the worst of those carriers and then had a blended average. And as you know, an average is, is not the low, it's not the high, it's right in the middle. Um, so the, the Surface Transportation Board really took a look at this and and you know, kind of took it to task. It's somewhat like price fixing, et cetera. And in a, uh, uh, in a uh, you know, a testimonial, whatever, uh, uh, SMC3 claimed that, uh, you know, 86% of the time, their, their rates are lower or among at least the top three lowest uh, shipments. Um, so that may be satisfying to some to know that 86% of the time they could be within the top third cheapest carrier. What it really means is that 14% of the shipments, you're leaving money on the table by not working directly with the carriers um, and finding the lowest rate every time instead of taking an average. So that's my little soapbox. I'll hop back off of that. Um, fast forward uh, to uh, 2007, and um, uh, the Surface Transportation Board finally fully deregulated uh, the, uh, the the application uh, or the, the the freight rates. So they basically said, shippers, carriers, work out a great deal, find something that works for you, agree on it, and then just go with it. Um, and this was like opening the frontier to the Wild West. Um, everybody said, great, we can do whatever we want, and then nobody knew what to do. So um, this is uh, where we've been now since, since about 2008 when, it, when the, the law actually went into effect. It, uh, it stripped out the antitrust immunity that the, uh, the rate bureaus um, had to make uh, uh, you know, combined uh, negotiated uh, blended pricing anymore. Um, but uh, their hope was it would really change the industry and open up some innovation and those types of things. Um, so we're starting to see carriers get really aggressive with 
with some of the pricing and, and be able to do that. Um, and and those variances that existed are are accessible uh, by being able to use some technology and, and work and negotiate contracts with the individual carriers. Um, but uh, I would say the overwhelming majority of the folks that are still in business, manufacturers, distributors, freight negotiating is not your core business. Um, but some of the most common practices we see is, well, this um, carrier was requested by the customer even though you as a manufacturer distributor may be paying the bill. Um, and there may be as much as a $200 swing on a rate from one carrier to another. Um, so having that having that information and having that, that visibility to say, well, um, for your customer, we can use this carrier, but it's there's a su substantial difference. Either the customers could make up that difference or you can go back to the carrier with some ammunition that says, listen, I've got rates for this particular lane with another carrier. Can you match them? Um, and in that way, it's, it's again, you're using that intelligence to say, all right, we can we can get those rates going. Um, probably one of the most common things is a state-to-state -state routing guide. And there's a, very likely a, a pretty colored map um, near the traffic manager's desk. And you know if it's going to Illinois, ship it with YRC. If it's going to Texas, use Central Freight. And every carrier's got um, lanes within those states that uh, some are good, some are not. Uh, some are competitive, so there's a lot of assumptions that go into that that translate into what we typically see on a typical state-to-state -state routing guide. Um, once a, a company moves away from that into some real-time freight and real-time collaborative rating with the carriers, um, we'll see about a 19 to 23 percent cost reduction um, without even renegotiating a single contract. Um, so it's very significant. Um, Manual rate shopping, um, this is also very common. Um, this is certainly how we started when we did it. Uh, we had six different tabs open, and I, we rekeyed the same information six different times, wrote it down on a notepad, um, and then selected our shipment, and then took all that intelligence and threw it away at the end of the day you know, on a post-it note or whatnot. Um, it's very time consuming, it's redundant, and if you get into the, the weeds on a, on a busy day, there's a real good chance that uh, it's, um, you're not going to have time, somebody's not going to have time to truly rate every single shipment on every single carrier. Um, it just doesn't scale well. Um, the uh, the I, just, I just know which carrier to use or what we've always done approach. Um, I, I just, I won't won't even go into detail on that one. It just uh, it needs a, uh, it's probably, if, if that's, if you hear that in your operations, then that's a, that's a good flare gun to, to say we need to take a look at this. Because um, the savings can be very, very significant. Um, the other sneaky thing that, uh, that the carriers do is, you know, they, they're using these discount percentages. And so a lot of folks will route their freight by, well, this carrier has the biggest discount. So it, it must be the cheapest freight rate because we're all on a, a czar 2001 with the FAK of 70. Uh, um, there's a lot of variances in there and that discount does not uh, directly translate into that that is going to be the cheapest price. Um, and I'll talk some more on that later. But uh, um, I, I like to keep things simple for me. So what I wanted to dive into is kind of how the rates are are derived in a very basic form, um, and and uh, I liken it to, to kind of uh, a batch cookie. So the base rates, uh, if you will, are very similar to you know here's the flour. This is the flour, the eggs, the milk. Um, you can make any kind of cookie with it, but that's the basic ingredient. Um, on top of what those base rates are, and that's basically a a walk-in point-to-point rate um, from any zip code to any zip code um, and then probably has some some weight breaks in there and you can have all of your carriers on the exact same base rates and come out with wildly different rates um, because the rules tariff um, which is uh, incorporated by reference on a uh, 
if um, if you get a a tariff sheet from a customer, um, that that uh, that tariff sheet or that contract is going to have um, just a little one line or something that says incorporated by reference is this rules tariff, and that this rules tariff is the 250 plus pages of documents that takes the the base rates and then manipulates them into something that's going to be closer to their network operations. Um, and basically it's going to say here's what that cookie is going to look like or taste like. Um, the discount they percentage is um, when you really drill into the details, it's really meaningless. Uh, it's a marketing number to make you think you're getting a bigger cookie. Um, uh, you get a fifty percent discount um, off of what? Um, you know, it, it's uh, it, it's so manipulated that um, uh, it it really doesn't hold a lot of value. Um, then the accessorial charges are added at the end after that. So. Uh, and all of these, of course, are negotiable. Uh, negotiable as well. Um, lift gates call for appointments, um, uh, late pickups, any of those types of things that you you might need or your customers might need. Um, you can work out and negotiate with uh, those with with a carrier for reduced costs or waiving those accessorials altogether. Um, so that a lot of that's going to go down into how much. How much? How often do you need it? And what kind of a, a customer are you for that carrier that they want to consider it? So, um, uh, in, it, being a good customer and an efficient customer doesn't always mean you have a, a, a ton of volume. So, um, good things to understand is that you know the carriers each they all have their own networks. They're constantly changing. Um, uh, one carrier may love to take four pallet freight, you know, four separate pallets. Other carrier says, "Ugh, I really don't like that. My networks are really set up to handle single pallets." Um, and carriers have different terminals, different locations. They have they have clients um, where they need a lot of equipment in Austin, Texas, and so I will give all kinds of discounted rates for any freight going into Austin, and. Um, uh, but my rates are a little bit higher going out of Austin because I've already filled all the equipment. So they use their pricing uh, to really optimize the use of their equipment and their networks. And when you consider that, um, and and you take a look at here is um, I want to make the the best use of my equipment, and you consider the profitability on a pickup and a delivery. So um, almost 38% uh, of a carrier's cost is um, is on the pickup and the delivery cycle. So if they can, when they back up to a dock, that's 19% of their cost, you know, immediately. So if they can, if they can get more freight or what they call low density, they can get more um, more freight while they're back up to that cost. Their margins are going up. Um, and uh, and then are more apt to say, hey, you know what, we can work with you because it's not a a one a one off shipment, um, and uh, and so that's it's uh, it's it's very good to to see and have that um, availability. But as soon as uh, as you uh, flip over to an averaged um, czar rates or or tariff rates. Um, that are someone other than your carriers by negotiate through some other third party contract um, though that that carrier loses that ability and it introduces a lot of risk um, to that carrier because now they're having to price their service on somebody else's price list um, or or abide you know or honor somebody's pricing on somebody else's price list so they have no visibility into am I really going to make profit on this lane um, or not? But I have to agree to somebody else's pricing. So uh, the the more you can mitigate their risk, the less they need to pad on top of that um, uh, pricing to protect their own their own yield and their own profitability. So that's why anytime you can go direct uh, real time to the carrier specific pricing. In their current specific pricing, um, the carrier is going to be a lot more apt to do 
more creative things with you on, on getting aggressive on pricing. Um, so um, I'll uh, throw that one out there. Um, the basic idea around the collaborative rating um, and what is now introduced uh, through the you know the advent of the internet and the ability to do real time direct connectivity with carriers is is uh, getting onto those carrier specific tariffs um, that is their network. Um, it's things you can do. Um, today is go in and look at your your top lanes. Where where are you doing your most shipments? And when you go back and negotiate with the carriers, go go right to the the jugular that's going to impact you. Uh, some of the worst things that we see manufacturers and distributors do all the time is come in and say, "I need a half a point discount on my tariff. I need a, a discount on every single lane." Um, and when that sales rep has to go back to their pricing manager, they're going to get a lot of pushback, and the pricing manager is going to say, why should I do that for you? And what's it going to mean in terms of additional you know, revenues and et cetera? But when you give that sales rep the ammunition to say, hey, I need to be at this spot on these lanes, or I need this kind of reduction or just on these lanes, well, that's a lot easier for somebody to say, oh, we can make a quick tweak on these lanes or that lane. And all of a sudden, uh, if you're doing 10 of those shipments a month, you've just increased your profitability uh, pretty substantially, at least on those 10. Um, and, uh, and, then, and then communicate with your carriers. Start talking with them, engage with them, and say, you know, what can we do to be a better customer, to be more efficient? Um, uh, and um, you'd be surprised if, if you ask and you have a good rep. Um, there's there's probably some things you can do for that. Um, so uh, hopefully they'll be able to share that with you. Now the advanced side on this is uh, is really getting into more into a collaborative rating with technology. Now this what this does is um, uh, it allows you to connect direct real time with the carriers on every single shipment pull the data in and be able to present all of the, the rates, the transit times, the quote IDs, and allow you to select the right carrier at that moment. Um, it happens instantly in seconds. You can see the variables um, on every carrier's price on every lane, so you know you're picking the least cost or the fastest transit time, whichever is more important on an on a order by order basis. Um, but what you're able also to do with that uh, when you have some automation with it is retain all that data into a, uh, into a big database and, and be able to run the very simple uh, reports that allow you to give those feedback loops uh, on steroids back to the carriers. Um, and I've uh, got an example of one of those I'll show you in a second here. Um, but the, uh, um, uh, when you're asking for those specific adjustments by lane, you have quantifiable data to say um, for XYZ carrier, here's the lane you missed last month, here's what you missed it by. And then give them the option to go through and say, wow, we'd really love to get that business going to Austin. I'm going to lower my rates proactively for you anytime you're shipping to, uh, uh, to Austin, Texas. Um, and the beauty of it is with the real-time collaboration, there are no tables to update. There's no, um, there's no uh, um, IT work involved. As soon as the carrier publishes that rate, it's immediately going to reflect the next time that, uh, that, you, uh, that lane comes up or that shipment comes up. Um, some of the things that, that, that we see uh, carriers, um, they really they've put out a lot of technology to try to be more efficient in their own operations, and using a a, a real time direct uh, TMS transportation ma transportation management system can allow you to grab an additional two percent off of a net price if you're using transmitting the information electronically. That means no one at the carrier side has to retype that. It means you're using their auto dispatch capabilities. And, and helping that carrier be a lot more efficient. And uh, you, know, you should definitely 
share in the benefits for that because if the carriers are offering 2% um, off as a discount if you use their technology, um, I guarantee you they're putting a lot more than that in their pocket So, in terms of their, their cost of sale. Um, so uh, the other thing that we've seen is, is adjustments. Um, and um, we have folks that will use the technology and essentially go through this process and share these feedback loops with their carriers every two weeks or once a month. And um, they're essentially renegotiating their contracts every two weeks um, or every month rather than doing it once a year. Um, once a year is, is a, um, I call it freight by hand grenade. Um, it's uh, you as a manufacturer distributor guessing what you think your freight spend is going to be and where it's going to go, what your sales are going to be for the year ahead. And then at the same time, you have the carrier that has no idea what their actual network is going to look like, where their assets are going to be best utilized, and their lane densities, where they're going to be competitive. So they're also guessing. Um, so there's just tons of assumptions and a lot of cake and fat on the rates um, to try to protect the carriers um, until they you know, can kind of see what's really going on. Um, so by getting into the collaborative nature, again, you're, you're helping to mitigate that, that long-term risk with the carriers. They can see this is what's affecting me now, and I can do this, and know, they know where they're going to be. And in turn, you benefit. Um, so that's, that's, uh, um, it, it's been an amazing uh, experience to see. Uh, this is a quick, uh, just a screenshot to give an example of, um, you know, within um, seconds, you've got rates from all the different carriers, your relationships, your contracts, uh, um, or you know, being able to plug in a broker uh, in addition to or multiple brokers in place of um, some of the direct relationships. Uh, but you're able to see all the information, book the shipment, email a quote, um, whatever you need to do on that one, and, uh, and then really see what the spreads are uh, between the different carriers. Um, some of the reporting tools that you have once you've got all this data in the application is if my Conway rep was coming in to visit me, um, I can do a quick date range on a report, hit go, and spit out something like this that says here's all of the, the shipments, here's where they went, where they were going to. Um, my awarded carrier price was $61. And uh, my Conway price was $75. So I'm able to hand this sheet right to the rep, and he can take it back, look at it, and say, wow, we can get aggressive on these lanes, this lane, that lane. And uh, they can proactively select where they want to improve their rates uh, for you as a customer. Um, and keep in mind, your other four carriers, you're giving them the exact same report. So seeing... Um, uh, rates uh, whittle down month over month, year over year. We've had clients that have not done formal bid package annual negotiations for six or seven years um, because uh, you know, the thought is, why would I go back to a hand grenade when I've been doing this surgical precision on all of my lanes with my carriers for the last several years? It just doesn't make sense to do it that way anymore. Um, but the, the the thrust and the, really the point um, is to is to engage, look at your carriers as these are your partners. This is this is uh, um, you can work with them and find out if a carrier is not or you're within your group of carriers is if they're not effective in a particular region uh, or price competitive, then you know then it's time to find another carrier that can service that region and really plug them in. Um, but it helps you be very, very smart uh, about your freight, about your business, and, and sharing that intelligence and working with them uh, proactively when they come in to be able to zip off some, uh, some, some data for them that they can use. Um, it can be very impactful for, for both of you. Um, um, let them react. Let them, let them uh, mitigate their risk. And uh, uh, obviously, a, a plug for for uh, for Bannon is our real-time direct connectivity software. 
uh, can certainly help you get there a lot faster. Um, but uh, anyway, I hope uh, this was helpful um, by way of background, by way of some easily executable ideas um, that anybody could put into practice today. And obviously, uh, if there's anything we at Banyan can do to help um, in terms of putting some more automation to that and uh, more efficient execution of, of, of freight, uh, we'd certainly love to talk to you. So thank you for, thank you for sitting through with me.